So in this video, I'm going to further talk about the logic of natural selection, in particular the, e the ecological component of exponential population growth. So we're focusing on the ecological components, the evidence, and the logic that Darwin applied in order to come up with the process of natural selection. Darwin didn't necessarily lay it out explicitly in all these steps. This was a framework that was created by Ernst Marr. A little teaser, this graph is going to be very central, essential to the ecological aspects of natural selection. So see if you can think about what this might mean and if you understand it by the time we get to the end. So this is the framework that Marr came up with for explaining Darwin's logic. This particular picture comes from Gregory 2009. And there are a set of ecological components and a set of genetic components. So we'll start off in this video talking about the first major ecological component, exponential population growth. In uh, another video, we'll talk about the, uh, the next set, population stability and resource limitation and what that does to population growth. In a previous video, I introduced all of the concepts involved in Mars framework for natural selection. And in this video and subsequent videos, we'll be unpacking each one of these major parts. So the observations, the ecology observations that Darwin utilized, they relate to population growth, how large populations will get over time, how they change over time, population stability, the fact that populations tend to remain stable over time, and the availability of resources, how the availability of space, water, food, other resources, sunlight impact population growth and population stability. On Gregory's figure here, population growth is the top one, stability is the middle one, resources is the third component here. And in this video, we'll just focus on population growth, in particular exponential population growth. The next video, we'll talk about stability and resources. So Darwin's first ecology observation had to do with population growth, and that is that all populations have the ability to increase exponentially. When populations are small and when they have a lot of resources, they will increase over time and they will increase at an increasingly rapid rate. So populations can start off small. Any population will undergo this process. It will get bigger and bigger, and then it will start to rapidly increase in size. This happens any time more than one offspring per free male survive to reproduce. So when, when each female produces on average just one baby or one child that goes on to reproduce, that female is just replacing herself. But when a female produces more than one, uh, more than one child on average, then you're going to see some rate of exponential population growth. Marr put it this way, all species have such great potential fertility that their population size would increase exponentially if all individuals that are born would again reproduce successfully. This is a slight overstatement. It isn't even if all individuals, it's even if more individuals survive than one. And this is important to remember, we often talk about exponential population growth with regards to things that we know increase really rapidly, like weeds in a field or weeds in our garden. Many insects will do this, insects, pests. Also viruses, pathogens can increase exponentially in our body or in populations. But even things like elephants will increase exponentially over time if they have enough resources. So Darwin, actually, he didn't study elephants directly, but he did a little math, he did a little research, and he figured out how quickly uh, elephants reproduce, how many offspring they make, and he did some theoretical calculations for how rapidly how rapidly elephant populations would grow. We now have a lot of good data on elephant population growth, so I'm going to use an example here of elephants from Kruger National Park, where they're protected from poachers, and they're managed heavily. So here's the raw data here, and if you just glance at it, you can see in 1994 there were almost 8,000, and then they doubled by 2009. And if you plot this data out, what you see is initially they increase, it looks kind of linear. 
they increase steadily from 1994 to 1999 as they have babies. And then in the early 21st century, the rate starts bending upward and upward and upward. Again, this initial part is relatively slow. It's linear. But as you get to the second phase, this curve starts bending up and up. And this is elephants that they take a long time until they take. There's many years pass before an, a female elephant can reproduce. They don't have a lot of babies at one time, just one or two, I believe. And so they are a slow growing, slow um, species, probably even slower than humans in terms of their uh, ability to grow. But even elephants can increase exponentially if they are protected from poaching and have ample resources. So exponential growth is characterized by a curve that becomes increasingly steeper. So you can draw a tangent to it. So you can draw an arrow that just touches it. That's a tangent. And as that tangent line gets steeper and steeper, that is a key characteristic of exponential population growth. This is when data, the raw data is plotted. And this is how we will often plot it for populations, uh, human populations or animal populations. But sometimes you will see things plotted on a log scale. This happens to be a log 10 scale. You can also plot it on a log, natural log scale. And when you do this, it, it, it is mostly linear. And increasingly due to uh, the current COVID-19 epidemic, you're seeing a lot of these scales because the number of cases is increasing so rapidly that often a log scale is useful for representing the change because the line starts to become so steep when you present the it on a, a raw scale. But the log scale is not necessarily very intuitive. So all populations, and we've done, this has been done experimentally many, many times. You can do this experiment yourself in your garden with worms or insects in a jar, worms in a jar, ants. They will increase exponentially as long as they have enough resources. So exponential population growth never goes on forever because resources are always going to be limited or other things. Predators are going to realize there's a lot of prey out there to eat. They're going to start killing the um, some sort of some sort of limiting factor is going to be imposed on the population. So in the next in the next video in this series, I'll be talking about population limitation and population stability, which is the second part here on Gregory's framework.